Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and that can only mean one thing. Space Engineers have released an update, and in today's update, we can do some quite interesting things. So let's have a look at the new block that's actually been added. Now, if we press G and bring up our menu, we can see we have a button panel. And if we look over to the left, we have the button panel and the basic small ship singular button. So I've connected a number of different motions up to the buttons so we can actually see how they work. So first off, we have the piston and we also have the rotor that are all now able to be done at a click of a switch. I'm simply pressing T on that menu and it's doing that. Maybe we want to turn off the power in the building. We can simply turn the power off. We could even access some sort of emergency warning lights. We could have a different sort of color scheme for that. And or simply even use it as a light switch or maybe we could use it for some sort of advanced security system that activates turrets and maybe other defenses in outer perimeters so you could be running through blast doors sealing up other areas with buttons and then maybe turn your security systems to kill the attackers that are being chasing you now let's move on down the row so next of all or next you're probably wondering is how can you set up these buttons so the buttons come when you place the block in this very sort of gray fashion so you can't really see we've got one two three and four and we'd simply press k on it we find the block so we're looking for that rotor over there in the background and i know it's called rotor 031 so i'm going to add it to one of these buttons so we're going to add it to button four in this case so let's actually increase the velocity so you can see we've added it over to button four and button floor has actually lit up so we can actually start turning that and increasing the velocity at a click of the button. It's very simple and it really immerses you in the experience. Now moving on to the button on the small ship. So if you place it on a small ship, you get a singular button. And if we press this upper one, we can open up the transport bay to expose where the troops would be housed with inside. And it's pretty smooth. And if we hit the lower switch, we can close the door up. So we've got a singular button has a very nice simple function. Now if you want the singular button on a large station, you can just do the old switcheroo with the rotor and you basically got the button and you can use a singular button. I personally would wish there was an option for the single button on the large station as well because if you have a door like this, you don't need all them buttons, you just need one so you can open up and close the door. So I've just rewired that and it's just so much more immersive to actually just press a button and open up the door through that menu as you walk up to it and it just allows you to get a really interesting sort of experience so the doors are open in here and it's just really nice now you're probably wondering could you remotely control one of these turrets using these buttons and you can but at the same time you can't because you're not going to be able to actually fire so i've got up and down movement and i've got left and right movement but there's no way of me actually firing the rocket pods because there isn't a switch motion so what I'd ideally like to do is add the missile blocks here and have a button option maybe that says fire. So if I hit that button, I could fire the missiles rapidly. So I could just hammer that and I'd fire a load of missiles at the target. But it doesn't work like that just quite yet. Now, heading over to my vehicle repair yard, I wanted to check out the buttons and just see if buttons actually simplified the process rather than activating it through the cockpit. Now, I'm bringing up the vehicle on the lift and I've got a fellow space engineer here to help me with a few buttons. But it soon gets out of hand as we start to lose connection with which buttons do which sort of thing. And it's one of the moments where I really probably should have read the manual for what this thing actually does and referred back to my setup on the control panel. But we were pressing buttons left, right and centre and it just wasn't producing any great results. We even managed to get a welder stuck and it was just much easier to actually visually see the buttons on the control cockpit rather than just have these numbers. Now, we were trying to press the buttons left, right and it eventually managed to get it back working. So we managed to self-write it there and then we're lowering it back down and this is where we managed to actually get control of the actual rotor itself. But with the buttons, you've really got to pay attention and remember which one does which. And it doesn't help much if you have a fellow space engineer in the booth who's um, decided to press a few extra buttons to make your job a little bit harder when it comes to repairing one of these ships. So I'm just lowering the arm down into place on the cockpit to weld that back up into position. Now, if we look at the buttons on the right, we've also got one or two options to rotate. We've also got options to move the weld up and down and push the piston a little bit further forward. But let's rotate the actual pad a little bit. So we've got that in position, but we've got the empty spot on the right. So we're going to rotate that a little bit around and we've caught the welder by mistake. 
and we can stop that in place just there and then we'll try extending the welding arm just out just a tad a little bit and now I've started to get used to the controls I can actually move it quite precisely doing little bits of welding around the ship the only problem is is as soon as I forget which button does something something crazy happens so I've rotated that the cockpit is up back up to 100% and the buttons did the job a little bit harder than I was originally expecting though. Now moving on to the antenna, the antenna has had something quite revolutionary added in this update and it allows you to ro remotely control other ships with antennas aboard them and you're probably wondering oh you can use that then to nip to another ship and build some supplies on the way but I of course thought about using it to make a guided missile. Now I started to build this little bad boy up I've got gyroscopes, I've got thrusters around it, and the idea is we're going to guide this into a target using this new remote setting. All we're missing now is a little camera on the end of the warhead, and it would be absolutely amazing. That, there we go, hint, camera block. Um, but moving on, so what I've got here is set up, and a drop-down menu will select the ship. So the ship is mine, and I've selected it, and you can see that we've got the missile selected, we've got all the items that are aboard it, and we're going to now control it, but I'm going to need a spotter so we can actually get these. So to move it left and right, we're going to use the gyroscopes, use the yaw functions. We can also move it up and down with this function as well. And we're also going to be using the thrusters. We're going to be using thruster 5 to actually control the main motion of the body. So we come off that. What I'd ideally like to do is be able to set it to the buttons, but we can't do that because it's actually a separate ship. Maybe that'll be in a future update, adding it to the buttons so we can actually control that. Now, let's actually have a look at this. So I've actually got a person controlling this missile in the actual cockpit and I am giving him some direction. Originally, the idea would be me being in the cockpit as well and watching this missile, guiding it into target. No one's aboard that missile. That is all being guided using gyroscopes and thruster controls. I am simply saying turn it left, turn it right and I'm going to do a little bit of follow-up video on this to show you how to make your own guided missiles but you can just see how cool and how dangerous this could be imagine someone enters your survival world and you send them a missile straight through their window or maybe hang a bay door and explode all their ships I mean you won't be the most popular kid on the block but it would be absolutely devastating to control something like this and lead it in to a target so you can literally turn it on a dime you can control it very well as long as the communication between the pilot and the actual spotter is very good because remember the spotter is going to be stuck on the menu so he can see nothing he's relying purely on you to guide it through so what I'm doing is just guiding it back around towards the cockpit trying to get it into some nice position maybe even try to get it into the cockpit so I'm guiding my pilot giving him some left and right gestures and telling him how I'm going to try to launch it into the side so we're going to make some final adjustments on the left and then we're going straight in for the cockpit but it looks like I'm gonna make a little bit of adjustment I make an adjustment too far off and I managed to ram it into the side but if that was armed with explosive that whole thing would have gone up and it would have been absolutely amazing and there he is sitting there controlling it away just a really nice idea and concept now I felt it'd be a little bit of a dishonor if I didn't end a video about buttons with a self-destruct button so here it is a big red self-destruct button let's press it and see what happens Now, I have to say, that was a pretty nice self-destruct button. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.